Thank you so much, Olafemi, and I've gone ahead and uh, pressed the record button because it's a, it's, a, it's a great day to be a midwife, but it's also a sad day for us at Virtual International Day of the Midwife. And we always think um, those of us that are, are born, we have adopted moms or we have our birth moms. And um, a sad day for us was um, to hear two weeks ago that our wonderful Chris Woodhouse's uh, mom, Zita, passed away at the age of 90. So this uh, session is uh, concurrently running with Zita's funeral. So we're making a memorial. Uh, today for her and um, thinking about Chris, our wonderful IP guy. Uh, we miss him very much and Dita was obviously a wonderful person. So this session today is in dedication uh, to Dita Woodhouse. So we think about our, our moms today, very special women and ladies on International Day of the Midwife. And thank you all of them. Okay, thank you, Jane. Now, the presenter are from Ethiopia, Nigos, uh, sorry if I didn't pronounce that name very well, uh, has more than half a decade experience as a midwife, and presently an assistant lecturer in midwifery at Wodia University in Ethiopia. He's undergoing his master's degree in clinical midwifery in Hawaza University, Ethiopia, he has undergone a number of training courses in antenatal care, published some papers in the field, and had some research publications to his credit. It's all yours now, as I hand over the microphone to Nagos. Nagos? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Rufami and Ms. Jane, my facilitators. So I'm, pre I'm going to present on obstetric danger signs, uh, basically on the knowledge of obstetric danger signs and um, reproductive age of women in the uh, state area. So I have uh, conducted this research with my colleague, uh, Mr. Tostaum Lato, he is a public health expert uh, there in Wundia University. Uh, so these are the outline of presentation, I uh, have introduction section, then objectives, and matter and materials, uh, followed by results and discussion, and conclusion, sorry, and finally sorry, the strengths and limitations with this. Okay. I got, can, can, can you please uh, uh, share yes, the background? Yes, I can hear uh, it. There? There, there's background uh, noise at your end. Can you please check that? Background noise. Yeah, I try to minimize. Yeah, <coughs> I'm telling them that I try to decrease and ask you to just be um, silent, guys. I tell them. I'm coming with me now. Yes, very clear. Go on. So, the, thank you. The introduction session as uh, 2015 target for the MDGs near uh, the preventable cause of maternal uh, mortality as well as morbidity remain uh, critical challenges for the globe, uh, despite I mean, a significant progress over the past decade, uh, even in Ethiopia. There were a decrement of maternal mortality to 353 per 100 thousand uh, live births. So, although the global maternal deaths have decreased by about 45% uh, since 1990, uh, still there are an estimated 800 women die still uh, each year uh, globally. Uh, this is the report of the WHO 2015 report. Uh, and uh, still 99% of the global maternal deaths were in the developing region, especially in the sub-Saharan Africa. Sorry, I think the presentation is uh, changed to another presentation. Can you adjust it, please?
Yeah, uh, so about 99% of the global maternal deaths are in the developing uh, countries, still about 6% in sub-Saharan Africa, including Ethiopia. And uh, for every 100,000 live births, 450 men die during the three periods, and the pregnancy, labor and delivery, and the postpartum period. These are the three periods. And delay in seeking care. This is one of the first uh, delay in the three delays is one of the factors leading to maternal days, which can be associated with lack of knowledge about obstetric danger signs. So these are the basic, the key obstetric danger signs during the pregnancy, uh, delivery, and postpartum period, as you can see from the slide. In during pregnancy, they receive a vaginal bleeding, uh, which may be um, most Symptom of sign for antipartum hemorrhage and swollen hands or face and blood vision can be uh, a fever sign for uh, hypertensive disorders during pregnancy. And again, similarly, during labor and childbirth, uh, there is severe vaginal bleeding, uh, prolonged labor, which can be associated with obstructed labor, and convulsions and retained placenta are more than uh, 30 minutes in the ESO. And in the third period, severe vaginal bleeding, again, the false morning vaginal discharge and high, high fever, which can be associated with infections, especially postpartum infections, including endometrites and peripheral sepsis. So these are the basic and the key obstetric danger signs in the three periods. So the leading cause of maternal disease in Ethiopia are these four, hemorrhage, uh, hypertensive disorders during pregnancy, uh, abortion and sepsis, and the federal ministry uh, of Ethiopia aspires to decrease maternal mortality to 199 per 1,000 life births by 2020. This is uh, a plan uh, prepared by federal ministry of Health. This is sustainable development goal. Uh, I mean, uh, health service transformation plan. And these are some research conducted in Kenya showed, uh, for example, heavy vaginal bleeding before expected date of delivery, unpleasant vaginal discharge, and water breaking before due date, and so on are the obstetric danger signs cited by the respondents of this study in Kenya. And in Ethiopia, again, about 32%, 27%, and 22% of the study participants were neurological about uh, this obstetric danger signs during pregnancy, delivery, and postpartum period, respectively. And these are the predictors of um, maternal awareness on obstetric danger signs, different social demographic and uh, obstetrical or maternal characteristics like maternal education labor, antenatal care follow-up, place of delivery, and occupation, and the like. So, uh, significant, this uh, study is very significant because uh, knowledge of obstetric danger signs during this period time is an important step for appropriate management and timely referral. And it's also a better strategy to enhance skill and emergency obstetric care uh, in low income countries, especially uh, like Ethiopia. And increasing uh, this the knowledge of this obstetric danger signs for pregnant ladies will reduce delay in seeking care uh, to improve early detection of obstetric uh, complications, especially obstetrical emergencies arise during pregnancy, uh, during uh, delivery, and postpartum period. So this, are, this is the objective. The uh, general objective, objective is to assess the awareness and the patterns associated with these obstetric danger signs, and here are the specific objectives to, to determine the level of knowledge and to assess the predictors of obstetric danger signs. So this study is conducted in uh, one the, in northern district of Ethiopia, Raya Kopo district. So this is one of the 13 districts of northern Lozo, around Wodja University, where I am working. So this is about 507 kilometers away from Addis Ababa, the capital city of Ethiopia. And there were about 42 health posts, seven health centers, and eight private clinics uh, with two health extension workers in his 
in each health post, uh, this is a report uh, doing the 2,000 people. Uh, the design of this study is committee-based cross-sectional study design. Uh, it includes mothers who have been lived for at least six months in the district, who have been uh, who have given birth within the last few months, regardless of the birth outcome. Maybe maybe live birth or uh, still birth. Uh, uh, we include both mothers. And the sum size was determined using single proportion proportion formula by assuming uh, a proportion P uh, from another study conducted in Goba district of Ethiopia and 95 confidence interval and plus of 5% absolute precision and uh, we add uh, 1.5 uh, of design effects and 5% of non-sponsor rate so the final sum size was 570. Sampling procedure. First, we made a stratification to urban and rural Kavale's uh, listeners. Kavale is the smallest administrative ah. unit uh, next to Wereda or district in Ethiopia. Uh, having in mind that, so next we do uh, simple random sampling (SRS) by using simple random sampling method we select two urban cables and two rural cables, it's total 14 cables and the proportional allocation of sample size was done according to the number of cables into urban and rural cables and again systematic sampling SS were used to select study subjects at the household level and again the lottery method was used to select the first household to be interviewed so the operational definitions, uh, knowledge of obstetric complications means uh, any system of obstetric complications mentioned by the study participant during pregnancy, delivery of the postpartum period. And in this study, the mother were considered as knowledgeable if she can mention at least three obstetric danger signs for each of the three periods. This is the standard of Japango, the maternal and neonatal program of Japango. So the questionnaire was adapted uh, from the this, the Japango, the maternal and neonatal program, and it first translated from English to the local language Amharic, then back to English. So the translated Amharic language was used to collect the data, and pretest was also done. And the internal consistency and content validity of the tool were checked. Actually, the internal consistency was checked by calculating from batch alpha from the uh, pretest questionnaire. It was about 0 0.8, which is greater than 0 0.7. So uh, we haven't made any uh, change uh, because if coronavirus alpha is greater than 0 0.7, uh, this is very best uh, for our data. And training for the data collectors and uh, supervisors were given by the principal investigator of the study. And the statistical analysis was basically done by uh, SPSS. Uh, Statistical package for social science, the version theory, and both binary and multiple logistic regression analysis were, uh, were employed, and the effect of compounding was also controlled. And finally, variables with a p value less than 0 0.05 at the multivariable logistic regression were considered as uh, the independent predictors for knowledge about substitute danger size. The ethical approval, the ethical approval was approved by the uh, institutional research review board of will be university and informal verbal consent and confidentiality were also after doing uh, data collection. So when we go to the results and discussion part, the first section is social demographic characteristics of participants and uh, we got a response rate of 95% and the mean age uh, was 29 and uh, regarding the religion, Ethiopian Orthodox Christianity was the dominant religion and uh, about 2.2 percent of the respondents were uh, married and about 50 percent of the respondents were illiterate they can read and write and housewives account uh, 88 percent uh, this is the table from the social demographic characteristics of the respondents the second section uh, is obstetrical characteristics about 40% of the respondents spent more than 30 minutes to reach health institutions and 72.6% of state participants had at least 
one and the follow up for this the last pregnancy and majority of the respondents start their NC visit as of less than 16 weeks of gestational age and many mothers uh, gave birth to their last child at home this is the table showing the obstetrical characteristics of, of the respondents and the other section was the knowledge of obstetric danger signs which is which was the outcome variable for this study more than a half of 53.3 percent of the mothers were not knowledgeable doing not knowledgeable about obstetric danger signs during pregnancy and um, nearly quarter of 72.2 percent of the respondents also not knowledgeable doing uh, labor and uh, 73 about 74 percent of the mothers were not knowledgeable about obstetric danger signs during the postpartum period these are the uh, most frequently cited obstetric danger signs uh, during the three periods. For example, during pregnancy, vaginal bleeding, and accelerated fetal movement or decelerated fetal movement, where the most frequently mentioned obstetric danger signs uh, during pregnancy, and labor, again, vaginal bleeding and retained placenta, and during the postpartum period, vaginal bleeding, offensive vaginal discharge, and severe headache were the uh, three most frequently obstetric danger signs mentioned by uh, the study participants. This is a table. As you can see from the table, vaginal bleeding in all the three periods during pregnancy, labor and delivery in postpartum period, uh, vaginal bleeding is the most frequently cited obstetric danger sign uh, during uh, the three periods. So, uh, this finding um, regarding the knowledgeable knowledge of obstetric danger signs during the three periods uh, is, um, is higher than studies than in rural Tanzania and Somali regional state of Ethiopia and this might be due to relatively high antenatal care visit coverage in this study and it's also consistent with study conducted in uh, Ethiopia in Goba district uh, during labor and delivery and higher prevalence was reported during postpartum period and delivery and uh, this finding is lower than findings from similar study during pregnancy and this uh, difference might be due to uh, the fact that a mother was considered as knowledgeable if she could mention two danger signs in a study conducted by um, Balinda and his colleagues but in this study mother uh, was considered to be knowledgeable uh, about obstetric danger signs if she only can mention uh, three obstetric danger signs. And then accelerated or decreased fetal movement and water breaks without flavor were rather frequently mentioned danger signs during pregnancy by mothers in our study and lower prevalence of knowledge about these danger signs were reported by study in uh, northern part of Ethiopia, Sagade. Oh, additionally, in this study, remain placenta and prolonged labor were known by 59% uh, and 28.4% of study participants uh, during delivery respectively. And this finding is again in line with the study conducted in uh, Goba district of Ethiopia. Additionally, offensive vaginal discharge and severe headache or were also postnatal danger signs frequently mentioned by the respondents of our study. And similarly, in studies in Kenya and Ethiopia, uh, showed offensive vaginal discharge was frequently mentioned as postpartum danger sign. Uh, high fever was mentioned by only 5% of the study participants of our research, but this figure is lower than findings from uh, Gopa and Sagari states of Ethiopia. When we proceed to the factors or the predictors associated with knowledge of obstetric danger signs, in this study, the mother's educational stars, occupational stars, and number of antenatal care visits and place of, place of delivery uh, were found to be predictors of knowledge about obstetric danger signs in this study. As you can see from this figure, uh, for example, in the first uh, row, uh, you can see mothers with secondary and above education were about 3.6 times more likely to be 
knowledgeable about obstetric danger signs during pregnancy than their illiterate counterparts. And similarly, uh, during the postpartum period, uh, the mothers were about five times more likely to be knowledgeable about postpartum danger signs than their, uh, again, illiterate counterparts. And uh, similarly, the private employees were about 5.4 4 times more likely to be knowledgeable on these danger signs. And um, as you can see uh, from this, institutional delivery was also a uh, main predictor uh, for knowledge of obstetric danger signs. During delivery, about uh, mothers who gave birth, the last birth at health institutions so were about two times more likely to be knowledgeable about obstetric danger signs during uh, labor and delivery. So these are the factors that uh, basically are shared with knowledge of obstetric danger signs. So um, in the present study, secondary and above education level increased the odds of knowledge about danger signs about 3.6 times as you can as you have seen on the table. So similar findings were reported by a study conducted in Tanzania, Nigeria, and Ethiopia. And this could be an indication for intervention to encourage access for education for women, and women should be empowered uh, to decide on their own health matters. Again, in this study, private employee mothers were more knowledgeable about danger signs of obstetric complications. Uh, this study is similar with uh, studies conducted in Gopa district of Ethiopia by uh, Bogale and his colleagues. This could be explained by the fact that women who have their own source of income have better access to health-related information, and they eventually they will get uh, good knowledge about obstetric danger signs, and uh, after that they uh, can protect themselves from uh, obstetric emergencies. And additionally, the present study revealed the number of PNC visits was associated with uh, the knowledge of this science. And a similar study conducted in Tanzania showed a similar finding. And uh, other studies conducted in Nigeria and different parts of Ethiopia showed antenatal care visits were a predictor of knowledge about obstetric danger signs. And this implies uh, stakeholders need to promote and see follow up, including the frequency of visit according to uh, WHO standard. And this finding of the study showed mothers who gave their last birth at health institution were more knowledgeable about obstetric danger signs. And again, this is similar uh, uh, to a studies conducted in Tanzania and Ethiopia. And uh, any institutional delivery should be promoted to increase the knowledge of mothers about uh, this uh, uh, obstetric danger signs. And finally, uh, the strengths and limitations of this study. Uh, the strengths, this study employed a community-based approach when selecting the study uh, participants. This makes a uh, representative uh, uh, of this study. And we can generalize to the whole population in around the district where the study is conducted. And additionally, we, can, we, can, we, can, we have minimized record bias by selecting uh, uh, recently uh, delivered mothers within two months because we are asking them about their previous obstetrical characteristics and some lifestyle characteristics. So uh, we should select the mothers uh, to minimize recall bias uh, this way. And however, we cannot indicate the direction of position to that relationships. Uh, we, uh, we have nothing to do with this because uh, the nature of the cross-sectional study uh, is that uh, it can't indicate the direction of position. So uh, as a conclusion, as you can see from the previous slides, the knowledge of mothers about obstetric danger signs was low in the study area. And the most frequently mentioned obstetric danger sign during the three periods, pregnancy, delivery, and postpartum period was vaginal bleeding. And the factors or the predictors uh, significantly associated with knowledge of obstetric danger sign were maternal educational status, mother's occupation, 
number of NEC visits and place of uh, delivery. And these are the recommended interventions. The first one, empowerment of the women. I mean, to have a better educational status, to have a better health status. So, women empowerment is very crucial to boost the knowledge of mothers uh, about obstetric and exercise. So, we can minimize maternal morbidity and mortality by uh, empowering women. And second one, improving the quality of health information about danger signs during MC follow-up. Uh, this recommendation is especially uh, directed towards the, the health professionals. Uh, so health professionals uh, should educate the mothers about the key of cedric danger signs during the three periods. Uh, and the third one, promotion of institutional delivery. As you can see from the previous slides, uh, institutional delivery was one of the pinnacles of knowledge about obstetric danger signs. So, uh, promotion of institutional delivery uh, will uh, decrease the maternal morbidity as well as mortality. So, I think this brings to the end of my question. As a acknowledgement, uh, we are thankful for World University for financing this study. And we also thank the data collectors, supervisors, and the study participants. And we are also grateful for organizers and participants of uh, the IDM. And if for um, if you want any further reading, this paper is already published in the uh, BMC Pregnancy and Childbirth Journal. Uh, you can access it. Uh, thank you very much. Now I guess this is Jane Houston. Um, all of Femi seems to have disappeared, so I'm going to be your facilitator for the rest of the session. Thank you. Really fantastic talk. Nigeria and Lagos. So let's have some questions, please, for Nigus. Thank you. So we're just waiting for our questions now. So can you talk a little more? Um, I really like when you're empowering. How are you empowering women uh, Sorry? You said in your slide uh, that you are empowering women uh, during childbirth and pregnancy in Nigeria. Sorry, Miss Jen, uh, it's very difficult to hear your voice. Can you text me on the chat box, please? Yes, I will text uh yeah Thank you very much for the question. Yeah, uh, empowerment of women is one of our intervention or recommended intervention in Ethiopia. I'm not talking about the Nigerian study. Of course, the Nigerian study recommended to empower women uh, to boost the knowledge of obstetric danger signs during uh, the three periods, maybe. And uh, we do our recommendations for this, uh, this specific to our study only. If I carry your question directly, or maybe you can write clearly in the chat. Yeah. I'm just testing is my sound better now. Thank you. 
All right. Um, how is my sound now? Is it better? Yeah, much better now. Sorry, it's talking across the board. So, any other questions for Nigus? All right. I thought that was fantastic. It's really great uh, to have uh, international midwives being able to talk with each other. Alicia has a question here. I'm curious about the type of providers providing out of hospital care. Who does that? Uh, yeah, the type of, the type of providers uh, providing care out of the hospital or health institutions are basically health extension workers. These are actors in the uh, community which give many health related information to uh, the pregnant ladies as well as the whole community. So I guess in Ethiopia they are health extension workers. So these health extension workers play a crucial role role in uh, uh, providing any obstetrical or other health information to the mother. So we uh, thank you for the question on the comment and uh, we will recommend these health extension workers to uh, give more uh, deep information about this obstetric danger signs uh, in, at the community level. Thanks for the comment. And uh, there's another question. Um, Genta, Mr. So, could you summarize the conclusion that of danger signs for women? Did it improve? Okay, thank you. Uh, there is in a chat box that Barker said that the culture had an, an impact in your research. Of course, uh, culture. Uh, I think, um, thank you very much, uh, I think qualitative study is very uh, crucial in finding out these uh, cultural uh, things in the community. So uh, our study is only in the quantitative part and it's very nice to uh, conduct the research, uh, both qualitative and quantitative aspects. So, we try to recommend on the uh, whole paper, and you can see the published paper that uh, I told you in the Bible Center. Uh, thank you very much. Another question? Okay. Okay, another question? I uh, welcome. Marcus, can you hear me? Is my sound okay? I've got, there's another question there. Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, um, I can hear you. Please continue. Tara asked, does culture have an impact on your research? Sorry? In the chat box, Tara Matty asked, does culture have an impact on your research? Uh, yeah, culture may have an impact on this research. Uh, you know, uh, there are other different research conducted in the uh, why women still deliver at home. Where I try to see published literatures on the factors associated with home delivery. Uh, you know, there are weird things here in Ethiopia. Uh, women still deliver at home because of, they have no trust on the health professionals. And they think that uh, giving birth at home will uh, make the baby uh, very outstanding uh, late in his or her life. And there are so many weird things about the factors associated with uh, home delivery. Of course, uh, as I have told you earlier, this research should be will be very uh, interesting if uh, it includes qualitative study design qualitative so the key informants like the uh, traditional birth attendants will tell us 
so many things about uh, you know the factors associated with home delivery. So I'll take it at, at the comment and I'll include quality uh, research design in my future uh, research activities. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Linus? Okay, any other questions? Mm -hmm. I have a question, Nigus, if I may. Okay. It's Linda here. I think there is a disturbing sound behind. Can there is. Yeah, I think I've got feedback. It's all right. Hang on. Oh. Okay. I think. Now it's better. Continue, please. Sorry, what is it? Uh, yeah, please continue. Yeah, I think um, Ginger was asked um, culturally as a man, are you allowed to interview women? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's an interesting question. Uh, of course, uh, we haven't faced any problem when we interview. Actually, I am not here a data collector for this research. I am uh, the principal investigator for this research. So there were eight diploma midwives. There, uh, interestingly, they were uh, women, actually, and. could interview them freely, but I think uh, the man is also allowed to interview women in our city. Uh, it's okay, but to gather more information, especially sensitive issues uh, regarding the women, the we try to recruit uh, female midwives to collect the data. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Now, I guess I hope everyone can can hear me okay this time. Uh, I think my laptop is complaining. Um, so thank you, Nigus, and uh, we're just going to finish up um, our presentation now and hope everyone can hear me okay. So um, as we said at the beginning of your presentation, uh, we're really memori memorializing our dear friend and master facilitator and IT guy, Chris's mum. Zita Woodhouse, so Chris is at his mom's funeral today, so we just wanted to spend a moment or two talking about um, Chris's mom, Zita, and she was a lovely lady, and she was a really great neighbour and friend and family member and mom to many women. So thank you, uh, I guess, for letting us memorialise Chris's mom uh, during this presentation as her funeral is on while we're having our conference today. So thank you so much. Okay, let's 